All right, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Randy Lau, and this is Jan Thurman. She's here to, to help me, and we represent the uh, Tai Chi for Health Institute program. And this is a program started by Dr. Paul Lam. Okay? So the program that Jan and I are certified in is called Tai Chi for Health Arthritis for Fall Prevention. And it's the first program that Dr. Lam created. It's based on what's called the Sun Style of Tai Chi, uh, the founder being Sun Lutang. Okay? So Tai Chi is what's called an internal Kung Fu style. And what separates Tai Chi from other uh, external or hard styles, as people would say, is the study of, really the study of energy. And it's um, related to Taoism. And it's all about balance. You, you've heard of yin yang and being able to, to not resist nature, but to learn about nature and learn about yourself. So even if you're doing it as a martial art, for instance, the name is Tai Chi Chuan, Chuan being fist. So that tells you it is a martial art, right? To become the top martial artist, you have to, you have to understand nature and not fight nature and understand how nature works and really become one with nature, okay? So um, today we're gonna go through the warm up. The warm up addresses the neck, addresses the shoulders, the spine, and then it goes down to the waist, the pelvic joints, the knees, and the ankles. So our six major um, joint areas, okay? And we do two exercises for each. Jan's going to demonstrate the seated, and I'm going to demonstrate the standing. Um, for me, the warm-up and the set include what's called Qigong. And Qigong is the cultivation of energy. Um, it's simply, it's cultivation of breath. All right. So we'll start off with the warm-up. And before the warm-up, um, this is our Tai Chi salute. And for us, it's the left hand. The four fingers are straight and open. And the whole body is relaxed and straight. The four fingers represent community. Uh, we're all in this together. We're all helping each other. Right? We're all here for each other. The thumb is bent. The bent thumb stands for humility. Right? If you watch those old Kung Fu movies or even new Kung Fu movies where they point that thumb at you. Right? It's not about me. Right? There's humility. We, we need to be humble to learn and understand and listen to ourselves. And the right hand is a loosely closed fist. And you just rest it on, on here, elbows are down, shoulders are down, right? and, and a little bow out of respect. So the fist, of course, is strength. So it's strength of body, mind, and spirit. And our program is about health, right? It's not about fighting. And in the program, the program starts off with just a simple little open and close, okay? and just loosening up. And they'll, um, you'll see the members walking around. So in times when we can have in-person back, they'll walk around the mill and then they'll give fist pumps right, and greet everybody and that starts the day. Uh, in my class, the way I like to start off my warm-up is teaching people the qigong and how to connect to the qi. And it's all about intent. So everything we do, think about it with your mind, we call that E for intent and that's what makes it qigong. Okay? So uh, for starting, I'm going to start with my feet together. You can start with your feet width of underarm. Width of underarm is if I swing my hands, it just brushes the outside. Or you can go a little wider, width of shoulders. And width of shoulders, my hands would just hit my thighs. And you want to stand straight and unlock the knees. So we'll talk about bending the knees, but people like to say unlock. We try to stay away from terms that create stress and tension. Okay? And I start by coming down. And coming up, taking a deep breath, breathing in and out. And what this warm up does is it connects our mind way up in the universe and deep down through our body into the earth. So you want to think way above the clouds, way up in the stars, and imagine you're gathering clean, clean energy or clean, clean water. You're flowing it through your body, pouring it down through your feet into the earth. So we breathe in. And I'm going to relax my palms and think inside of my body and out. 
Just relax. So you can think of yourself standing under a shower. And as you stand under that shower, why do you feel so good? Because you can imagine that clean water coming in, flushing, picking up all the dirt, all the stress, all the soot, and it flows into, into the drainage and we let the earth regenerate it. Okay, so one more time, breathing in and out and relax the bottom of the feet. Okay. So one thing I'd like you to do is I'm going to ask Jan, when you're seated, to extend her legs. Okay. And as she extends her legs, her feet are going to pick up a little bit. So I'm going to ask her to gently place her feet on the ground and with her thigh muscles, gently push her legs in, into the earth. Okay. So there's that constant stretch flowing into the earth. While she's holding that, I'm going to ask her to relax her pelvic, but don't let go of that stretch. Relax her knees, relax her ankles, and try to have that constant expansion, that constant stretch. So it's very simple in concept. We want to expand, but we want to totally relax. Okay? I want her to relax her chest and just breathe from the lower belly. We call this the Tantin area. It's our major energy center. Okay? So the second thing I do is we come up from the side and we breathe in and I look over my left palm, staring at the horizon. I gather, come to the front and I exhale. And breathe in and out, staring right over the fingertips to the horizon. Gather, come in and exhale. Try that one more time. Breathing in and bring it right in towards your shoulders. And exhale, staring far away. And again, deep breath, in and out. So the first movement teaches us to connect to the energy from above. This movement helps to teach us to connect to the energy all around us. And exhale. And then I like to Imagine gathering the energy from the earth and imagine you're pulling it up through your legs, through the bones, through the spine, over the top of the head, down the front of the body, exhaling. It's like pulling a syringe, the plunger. Relax the legs, relax the feet. Imagine that clean, clean energy going through the body. And as you exhale, all the exhaust, all the stress, all the disease exhales from your body. You can imagine clean going in and black, dirty exhaust coming out. And that outward breath should get cleaner and cleaner each time you do it. And then imagine you're picking up water and you're washing your face and breathing in. Deep breath. And make a fist and squeeze. Exhale and twist and then let go. Again, breathing in and imagine you're filling up your whole body with clean, clean energy and squeezing it through your body, twisting and letting go. And one more time. And then imagine you're pouring it in your bones, in every bone of your body, stimulating the bone marrow stimulating blood production, red blood cells, white blood cells, feel the bone cells growing. So your whole body continues to grow. Deep breath. And lastly, imagine you're pouring all that energy into your ligaments and tendons, squeezing and letting go. Never want to hold on to it. And if you look carefully, you'll see me turning a little bit on the waist. Right? I'll emphasize that so you can turn your waist. We want all the joints to be loose and open. And that's one of the internal principles and skills that we try to develop in Tai Chi. Okay? And then finally, relax, bring everything back to center and back down. Okay? And just relax. So this is our warm-up. We start off with warming up our neck. And I join you to ask you to follow me. You can, you can be seated. You can be standing. Um, safety is number one of this program. Uh, 
take a break as you need it, drink water as you need it. If something is uncomfortable, stop, relax, and restart it. Okay? Uh, a lot of times, if something's uncomfortable, make, make the movement smaller. If they, it doesn't feel good, just don't do it. Okay? And again, take a break as you need to. Okay? And be aware of yourself. Okay? So our first movement for our neck, our palms are facing forward. Relax the shoulders. If you're standing, unlock all your joints. If you're seated, also unlock all your joints. Okay? Imagine the top of your head gently being pulled from above. The body is suspended and the body falls. Imagine the hip, the waist, the pelvic are totally relaxed and the legs are gently flowing into the earth, a little heavy, sinking into the earth. Okay? Fingertips are lightly extended. So as we breathe in, you pick up your arms. Again, imagine you're washing your face. It drops down, turning your palms and exhaling. And then come down, just dropping your head, opening up your neck. Finish the breath, take your time, and then repeat when you're ready. Always go at your own pace. Always go at your own speed. As you come out, tilt the sternum up. And notice how that corrects your posture in instantly. So breathing in as we rise, as if washing the face, and exhale using your shoulder blades and down. As your neck drops, imagine and feel how it gently pulls on the spine. So not just warming up the neck, but it's starting to warm up the spine. You can feel it gently pulling the spine until you feel and imagine that pull going all the way down to your tailbone. So we'll do one more, coming up and out. And when you finish, just relax. And take a breath. The second four our neck, okay, one hand comes up. Okay. The fingertip is just about the height of the eyes. You want to be able to either look at the tip of the middle finger or look. I like to look just over the tip. Imagine I'm staring at the horizon or the mountain top. The other hand is in front of you, elbow is bent, and just facing the ground. As we're going to switch hands, I want my bottom hand to wash through the forearm and down. Okay. And as we do that movement, pay attention to see if you can feel the warmth of your palm washing right through the center. Okay. All right. So we'll start the second movement. I'm going to start my right hand, but don't worry about right and left. So we're going to do two sides. Okay. So I'm going to start turning to my right as I breathe in. Turning just the head, breathing in and out. Remember to finish the breath. Take your time. The bottom hand feels like it's continuously falling. Open the throat. And turn as much that it's comfortable for you. And each time you turn, try and turn a little bit more. But don't force it too much. These type of exercises, the slow movement over a longer period of time is what releases the muscle tissue. And exhale, notice how I wash from the elbow all the way up through the palm and down from the fingertip through the center of the elbow. Come back to the center and hold the ball right in front of the throat. So we're going to do an open close, so you inhale and exhale. As you do this movement, focus on your shoulder blades. Feel your shoulder blades expanding. The palms are the height of my throat. So I tell my students, open your throat. Your throat is your speaking voice. Any thoughts should be clear and easy. There should be no restrictions. And then just gently let your palms fall forward and down. Next we move to the shoulders. You turn your palms, let them hang right at the side of your body. Let 
lift right over here, touch your body the whole time. Okay? It's going to move up and down, but just let them hang at the side. Okay? Just fold the elbows and put your mind right in the back of your shoulder blades, the lower inside corner. And squeeze your shoulder blades together. And when you can't squeeze them together anymore, pull them up. But focus on the inside lower corner of each shoulder blade. Pull them forward and down. So it's a nice large circle. Breathe, breathe naturally, breathe continuously. Tip of the tongue is on the roof of the mouth. And we'll go three times. Notice my palms are continuously rotating. If they feel tight, just shake them out. All the way down and then turn the palms out and pull the shoulder blades forward and then up, then rotate the palms and squeeze back and down. I'm trying to activate those muscles under your shoulder blade, the subscapularis. That's that place where somebody, you ask somebody to massage your shoulders and you want their thumb to just dig right in under your shoulder blades. Put your mind right there and activate that muscle. Everything else follows all the way down. And relax a little bit and do one side, left or right. When we do one side, allow your body to turn. Relax your waist, relax your neck, and everything follows your shoulder blade. Notice how my body revolves right around my spine. I take a nice natural breath. I just let my neck turn, let my waist turn. I'm going to shake out my other arm, constantly checking that it's relaxed. I'm going to go three times all the way down, then come forward. I'm going to pull my shoulder blade forward, just focusing on the shoulder blade and squeeze and down. Be careful that you're not leading with your head or your waist, that it's following the movement of your shoulder blade. In the internal arts, you lead everything with the mind. So think about the movement, relax, and over time you can feel your body wanting to move with what you're thinking. Okay, all the way down, relax, and then we do the other side. In general, for classes, we'll do three times, <coughs> sorry, three times each side, or six times together, but in reality, if you do these movements by yourself, do them as many times as you feel that you need to or you have time for. You don't have to do them in order. And just take your time and enjoy the movement. Okay? And then come forward. A lot of times in class I lose count, I'm talking or you know, I'm explaining, trying to fit in as many things as I can. So don't worry. Don't worry if you don't do it exactly correct. Just listen to your body and make it comfortable. Notice my palms are relaxed. And if I'm standing, you might notice that a, one heel actually rises a little. And down. Okay, relax a little and do the two arms squeezing back. Forward, turning your palms and all the way down, and then forward, front to back. All the way down and relax. Okay? And those movement is so large, we're just going to make loose circles, just swing. It's kind of like helicopter blades. And this is actually a little bit of a break. Okay? If your movements aren't quite so large, you don't have to take this time, but we need to loosen up those muscles. Okay? And then we slow it down. And then we go back to our practice. So breathing in and out. So because I'm standing, I can show that there's some expansion and there's some relaxation. <clears throat> if you're seated, you might still feel that a little bit. It just won't be as big a movement. And I like to turn my waist. If I turn my waist, my palms remain in the center. 
when I turn my waist, every joint of my body will move. Notice my head is facing forward, that means my neck has to move. My elbows move, my shoulders move, my spine is moving. Both pelvic joints, the knees, the ankles, everything is moving. And I can turn as many times as I want, kind of that little wiggling move. My fingers are just the height of my head. My palms can overlap or they can stay on each side. And it's breathing in and out. And breathing in and out and we'll do one more time. And breathing in and out. Okay, and that completes our shoulders. So next we move to the spine. Um, there's different ways in the program. They start off by holding the ball and separating the palms. And I like to just hold the first stretch. I like to expand my shoulder blades away from each other. Just taking my time wiggling, breathing naturally. And then I'll slowly switch, so holding the ball. So I'll start off with the standard way. And I think Jan can remain in that posture and then I'll show you a little bit how I modify the movement. And come back down. So while Jan's going to cradle the ball, my modified movement is my elbow comes straight down and I wash through the arms again. And like I said, there's not really enough time right now to discuss it, but this will bring in energetic properties that overlap medical qigong. And there's a line here that goes through the body. This is your pericardium channel. And there's a line on the outside that's your triple burner channel. And as your palm washes through the arms, the center of your palm is your heart. So we're opening our heart and we're connecting. And we're actually connecting through five elements through here and the 10 organs. So we're not just doing a physical move, but we're also washing our organs. Okay? So this is one way to separate, and I like to modify by washing. Okay? So we'll start breathing in, a continuous movement, elbows are bent, shoulder blades are expanding, and as you exhale, you can either hold the ball and split the ball or you can wash through the forearm. Breathing in, gently expand the spine and exhale. Just let it fall back into place. Breathing in, imagine every vertebrae expanding and as you exhale, every vertebrae, every joint falls perfectly back into place. Breathing in, sink the air down into your lower belly. Expanding your lower stomach or your lower belly. Yeah, we don't really have a lower stomach. <laughs> but we have a belly. But it's just one of those things we learn to just call upper and lower stomach. Okay? And then come back to center. Okay. And from here, I'll just show you a little modification. So as we come back, I like to wash the outside. So as this hand drops. The other hand washes the outside, and then the top hand lifts, the bottom hand falls, and then top hand spirals out, and we turn, and we expand, and as we come back, the elbow drops down. Okay, it turns, and I turn my waist. The bottom hand rises on the outside, and I'll turn my waist, and I'll lift, and I'll fall, and I'll turn, and I'll spin right in the center, and expand. I'll do that one more time. And you can see how much I'm turning my waist with each movement. Rise and fall and turn. Because I'm constantly working on opening and loosening my joints. And that's part of a principle called song or song. Okay. And I'll do this several times, but for now, we'll just come right back to the center. Okay. With this qigong, I like to do right at the heart. Expand the heart, lead with the heart, and as you're doing the open and close, imagine there's a little sun right in your chest. That sun is warm and cool. It's connected to the sun up in the sky, and it draws its energy from there. And you can imagine that sun in your chest is always there, 24 hours a day. You can do this sun chikung, 
and it gently sends energy to any part of your body that needs it. You can send it through the bones, the nervous system, the circulatory system, the lymphatic system. You can imagine it healing gently one organ or one spot, wherever you need it. Okay, so we do it open and close, breathing in and out, expanding and contracting. Expanding and contracting. And then the second part is to turn and hold the ball up and down. And we're going to turn towards your upper elbow, so breathing in. Imagine and feel your spine winding and opening. Relax your waist, relax your neck. And when you're ready, exhale. As you exhale, feel the body just pulling naturally back to center. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. And although I tend to rise up a little bit on my heels, you don't need to do that. We'll do one more time each side. And never worry if you're doing right or left, especially on the warm ups, we do both right and left. And then we'll come back to center. This time I like to go to solo plex. As you do your solo plex, lift your sternum and just put a wedge far, far in front of you and feel yourself full of confidence. Kidneys are relaxed. Okay? And then palms down. Then we go to the lower body. Okay, so that was neck, shoulder, and spine. So now we're going to do the waist. So Jan will remain seated. And I'll do the standing. And as we emphasize the lower, the lower body, okay, it's not just loosening up the joints for me, but I'm also emphasizing building muscle tone. The first thing I'm going to do is, is it's just stepping back and stepping forward. And I like to turn my waist, but you can go anywhere from pretty much straight back to a 45 degree, not more than 45. Okay. It's going to go back and then it's going to go heel. And again, I like to go 45. And you can experiment with that. And as you go with a greater angle, you're going to feel a little bit more stretch, especially on the bottom of your feet. But remember, do what's comfortable, start with what's safe, and then experiment a little bit. Okay? So I'm going to come up. Same time, I'm going to turn my waist, and I'm going to take a small step back. And I'm going to drop my hands. I'm going to pick up this leg and I'm going to come forward. Okay. So I'm going to go up. First, I'm going to do it pretty much straight and back. Okay. Breathing in and out. Okay. And now I'm going to turn a little bit. So I'm going to turn my waist, breathing in, not more than 45, and I'm going to turn my waist and come out. Okay. Always remember to do only what's comfortable for you. Breathing in and out. Yeah, and I'm going to stand and I'm going to switch sides. So I'm going to go a little straighter first. And I'm trying to focus my weight on my standing leg without my body shifting as I do this. Relax the hip, relax the pelvic. Okay. And now I'm going to turn 45. Now take my time. It's going to challenge me a little bit more. It's going to challenge my balance. It's going to challenge my muscle tone. Just relax the legs. The legs are a little heavy. Sinking into the earth. Okay. And stand. Okay. The next one, my hands are on the waist. I'm going to step forward. Same time I'm stepping forward, my opposite fist will lift up. And as I shift forward, I want my fist right in the center of my body. Right? Don't lift your shoulder, just nice and relaxed. Low, height of your solo plex. Okay? Then I'm going to turn a little to my waist and sit back. And I encourage you to try and pick your knee straight up, bring it back, and then step down. And then shift, pick up the opposite knee straight up, pick up the opposite fist at the same time, stepping out and shifting forward, relaxing. As you shift forward, as you shift forward, 
we want to attend to the Achilles tendon and the ankles, and that's a lot of fall prevention. There are a lot of falls that are caused by tight ankles, tight Achilles tendons. So if you know the runner stretch as you're coming forward, straighten the back leg and you'll feel the calf muscle stretch a little. Heel and toe are flat on the floor. Okay, so those are small things. So <laughs> stepping out. <laughs> And coming back and lift and then come back and down and shift and together so as you progress everything starts to coordinate together sink straighten the back leg if you're standing sit into the back leg lift the leg straight up and then bring it back it's a small movement but it's challenging your muscles it's small little muscle tone don't step too large if you need to use a chair or a walker or, or some kind of assistive device, go ahead and use it. We'll do it one more time. So notice I sit and I'm pushing from the back like somebody's pushing me from the small of my back. And then I fold into here, straight up and down and step out. And I come back. From the waist, we're, we're actually moving into, into our knees. Okay, so the, the only difference is now we're, we want to keep that foot off the ground. Okay? So it's very similar. I'm going to pick up and extend. Okay? Then pick up and down. Okay? Pick up the other side, pick straight up, and then extend. And pick up the knee and down. So. As you pick up your leg, relax your upper body. I always tell my students, only pick up your leg as high as the upper body can be relaxed or you're not tensing. You'll, if you relax, you'll feel the lower abdominals and the legs shifting and that's all you need. Resist the temptation to do this. Resist the temptation to drop your body down as you pick up the leg. Okay? So only as high as is comfortable for you. Okay, so start up with the left again, breathing in and out. Just take your time on that stretch, then lift, and then come down. So you can see me fighting for my balance. <laughs> and out, exhaling, then lift, and down, and shift, and come out and lift, and press, and down. Okay? And one more time. And out. Okay? And down. And the last thing we want to address is our ankles. Okay? So you want to shift to one side, your hands can be here, your hands can be here. I like my hands here, but you can try either place to see what the difference is. And shift and gently 45 degree ankle, picking up and down. Again, upper body is still. And barely touch the ground. So we're toning the standing leg and we'll switch. So experiment where you're comfortable with your hands. Um, I like our hands up here. It involves the whole body. Okay, heel and toe. Just heel and toe. And I'm going to switch. And then we'll go small toe, big toe. And notice again, I like to go 45 degrees. But anywhere from straight out to 45 is okay. 45 degrees will stretch the bottom of the feet a little bit more. And that might help you to address issues like plantar fasciitis. And then just shake them out. And I actually like to add one more. So Jan seated in the chair, she just rest your hands on the side, right? No upper body. And then pull your heels up, like pulling your toes off the ground. Yeah, just pull them straight up so her feet will slide in. Yeah, and then pull, like you're going to get them off the ground, but only your legs. Don't grab the chair. Don't grab the chair. Yeah, just relax. Okay? The object is not to pick your feet off the ground. The object is to stretch the bottom of your feet. So you go through the motion of pulling your heels up. And she should feel the bottom of her feet starting to expand and stretch. Upper body totally relaxed. She can shake that out. Yeah. But that's what everybody does. They'll grab the chair. That's not the object. The object is to get a nice stretch. And that will help even more. All right, so that's our warm-up. Simple loosening up. If you're standing, just pick the knee up to you and drop your hand down. Just, okay? And we want to just gently 
add some compression, some capotment okay, to the top of the leg. And I also like to do the ITB band because this is a really tough, tough muscle on the side okay, and walk in place and take breaks as you need it. Okay. So we'll run through our set. Um, the Tai Chi set again is based on San Lutang's uh, Tai Chi. We'll go through the movements. We'll just do what's called the basic six movements. We'll start off with the three and we do it left and we do it right. So again, don't worry which side you start off on. So we always start with the gathering. Breathing in and out. And standing. So from standing, my feet are 45. You start off with nothing, and then you imagine you're holding a ball of energy in your palms. The fingers are lightly expanded. So from standing, the first thing you want to do is called commencement, where we pick up that ball of energy. I'm going to shift to my right, and I bring it to my heart. I'm going to step out with my left. I'm going to roll that ball of energy out all the way down. And then I'm going to bring my right foot up even. I'm going to go out a little bit and then return back to my heart and do an open and close. And that's commencement. Okay. All right. And what I like to tell people is a story. So imagine you start with nothing, then you're going to gather up that energy, you're going to bring it to your heart, and then you're going to introduce it to the rest of your organs. So bring it inside of your body, bringing it up and out through your heart, your lungs, and your throat. Just when you think you're going to do it one more time, you take a break, and we do an open and close. Okay? So we do that one more time together. Okay? So it's gather, breathing in and out, and then prepare, take a breath, hold the ball, and begin. Commencement. Rolling the ball of energy out, introducing it to the other organs, expanding and relaxing, and then emphasizing the heart. So that's the first three. So the next set just involves a little bit more movement. We start splitting that energy. So starting from here. Okay. So number four is called single whip. So I'm going to shift and I'm going to step to my right, I'm going to press that ball, and now I'm going to expand it. And I'm going to bring it back a little. And this is where you start to see the yin-yang principle start to come out. The standing, there's a little bit of walking. Normally we do three or five odd number. Main thing is to pick up your legs. Take small enough steps so you're comfortable. I'm going to end on my right side, then the hands are going to come back to the heart. Okay, so go ahead and finish your movement. And we do an open and close. And then we're going to repeat on the left side. So we step, and we press, and I turn, and I step in. And my hands again are just about the height of my eyes, so I can scan the horizon. One time, a second time. Paying attention to my posture, my weight, and a third time. I'm going to turn a little to my right, bring the hands back to the heart, turn a little to my left, and spiral back to center, and end with an open and close. And then we're going to do a double hands pushing, lifting the sternum, hands fall. I return back to my original position. The finish come up and down. And then we just relax again when you're done. Okay? Thank you. So that's, that's the basis of our program. There's a lot in there. So please feel free to ask me questions, uh, write to me and such. Okay? All right, left hand, right hand. Thank you, everybody.